uh, devil can use and demons can use four main things the first one is places 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 especially that are dedicated to devil or places where demonic activity conspired or places where especially hideous acts were done like somebody was murdered somebody committed suicide for example there are places the, the, they call them haunted houses they make movies about them and these are not exaggerations a lot of the movies that are based on haunted houses are actually based on true stories compiled from exorcists catholic priests who did exorcisms in on places because one of the things that if, if you if you were in catholicism you know that the, one of the things that uh, catholic priests many times will do or people who are on the staff in the catholic church who do exorcisms is they actually cast out evil spirits from places from from people who have uh, places that have evil spirits and this is not an, uh, some some bizarre weird uh, catholic thing if you see that in the bible there were places god occupied he occupied the, the temple of solomon he occupied the ark he occupied the tent of meeting where god's presence was was there there was stuff happening there and so now that we are the temple of the holy spirit but we also know that like for example in our church we pray all the time that this will be the place of freedom so when you come in a lot of you you come into places like these you probably have felt like man i feel lighter i feel i feel something different about this i feel a sense of peace what is that it's god's presence that's in this place but there are places you can go to and you realize you're like man i feel like some some semi truck got loaded on my shoulders because there are spiritual forces in certain places that are predominant especially if people gave access to the devil by doing something hideous and something horrible like when you move into a new home give that home to God even if you are renting bless that home take some virgin oil and just anoint that home like not too much so that your landlord doesn't kick you out I remember one young man was trying to get his mom saved and so he took a bucket of oil and he poured it on the driveway and uh, poor guy his mom walked out she slipped and broke her back yeah so I'm not talking about that kind of a thing okay because people are gonna get hurt but I'm talking about something where you just pray over your house you and your family you don't need to invite a pastor or a priest you can just simply come with your family together and anoint the doorpost of the house say Lord we dedicate this house to you if there was some bad stuff happened here if people got divorced here or people got murdered or people died here we cancel every assignment of the devil devil we're paying the bills get out And if some sneaky demon come in, comes at night, starts to move chairs in your house and doors and everything, you, you tell the devil, say, devil, I paid the light bill. I paid the utility. I paid the mortgage. So get out. You're not paying for this. I'm paying for this. So it's my place. You get out. And your place belongs to God. The second thing that the enemy can use and attack is through people. So places is, and second is people there are people who are so full of the devil you come in contact with them I call them like emotional vampires they suck life out of you you're like everything is going great until you meet with the person they have a pro they have a problem for every solution it's like literally you put them in heaven and they'll find a problem there with God it's like these people like they're just it's it's so and, and some people they just their personality is wired like that but some people they got devils and what makes them dangerous listen to me very carefully now the theoretically or legally speaking we are full of God and God is more powerful than the devil we shouldn't be afraid of any 100% but if these people are so deep into their demons and deeper in their demons than you are in the Holy Spirit meeting them they will affect you instead of you affecting them God is powerful more powerful than the devil 100% the question is you are not more powerful they can be deeper in the less lesser power than you are and they could affect you and sometimes you can feel that but have you met people that you were down discouraged and you met some people and they're literally like just full of the holy ghost like life just comes out of their even their spit <laughs> their eyes are full of fire they're just full of excitement you you it's been five minutes with them you left the meeting they're like man it's gonna be all right we got this the ocean to my to my knees right here everything is going to be all right why because they're so deep in God they pull you out but if people are deeper in their sin and in Satan they'll pull you down Satan can use people to attack you if you're not believing me Jesus was going to the cross 
and Satan used a person it was Peter and he looked at Jesus and said Jesus don't go to the cross and Jesus knew this person is now being used by the devil and Jesus of course he, Jesus is hashtag boss and so he he looked at Peter he says dude now get off get behind me devil like if you have those people in your life don't, don't tell them get behind me Satan because it might not work really well um only that's why Jesus, I said Jesus was hashtag buzz that's why he could do that but the rest of us we just need to isolate some sometimes from those people walk away and let the Lord take care of them and get deeper in God number three that the enemy can use objects objects through which power can flow you have to understand the spiritual world can operate through material world for example in the Bible you see that the staff of Moses is just a shepherd's staff staff Moses drops it picks it up and from that point on the scripture says the staff of the Lord the rod of God it doesn't say the rod of Moses because that became an object that God used to do miracles in fact some miracles God told Moses take the staff he didn't say you speak he says the staff hit it with the staff stretch the staff do this with the staff touch it with the staff because it was an object God used to perform his power reveal his power you with me we see that in the new testament that jesus had garments you know long garments and they were not like ours right now so they kind of like were long and so and the streets were not as clean as ours and so they had dirt and these like the bottom of the garment collected a lot of dirt and the woman had a physical problem for 12 years she touches the dirtiest part of his clothes and the scripture says that the bleeding immediately stopped and jesus felt power leave power can flow through clothes the Bible says they took belts and things that Paul wiped his face with and they placed on demon possessed people and demons would leave and people will get healed. That tells me that objects is a channel. That's why as Christians we pray with anointing oil. Oil, you know, we use it to make pancakes. But in church to get rid of sickness, there's no power in oil but power can flow through oil our hands but they can be used as an object of God's power the same thing can happen with demonic is there are charms wood dolls horoscopes dream catchers widget boards stuff that many people look and they're like well I'm just curious about that like this is a problem with our generation we're so open-minded our brains are falling out I am shocked with how my generation uh, we're, we're just just curious we just want to try everything out well put a snake in your driver's seat and see and see how much your open mind this will affect if the snake will stop being poisonous because you're open-minded I learned this the hard way when I was in Ukraine I shared the story many times but for those of you coming for the first time it'll come in as the first time as like first time you'll hear it I, I had a my my teacher who was helping me with math I had a hard time with math and so this teacher who was helping me with math she was a doctor and she had a German Shepherd and he was not a Christian German Shepherd. <laughs> he had to be on the leash because he attacked people. And so he was a scary German Shepherd. But because I knew that he was on the leash and I knew that he couldn't attack me and I knew how far the leash went. And so me being kid, you know what I like to do? <laughs> you, know, I, you know, I like to provoke him because I knew he could only bark, not, not bite. Because I didn't step on his territory. That's how devil is. He can't attack you. He can only tempt you but not torment you as long as you stay away out of his territory. Until one day I didn't see the German Shepherd and I saw this house like these dogs they had these houses they were pretty big and so I thought that they took the dog away out of curiosity please understand curiosity sheer curiosity I went in under his territory and I stuck my head inside of the house now little did I knew is that he was sleeping behind the house so me stucking my head there woke him up he's behind so next thing I know is I hear woo. So he jumps over it and there I am with my butt toward his face in my head inside of his house. Now he did not understand that I was curious. I didn't want to get bit. I had a life. Right here. I still have a scar. I won't show it to you so I don't scar your life. He goes for the pound of flesh and tears the flesh out. I see blood stuff just spilling. If it wouldn't be for the doctor to pull me pull me out and stitch me up I probably wouldn't be here today all because I was curious see you can take widget boards horoscopes and you say I'm just curious devil doesn't care you curious stay away from his territory as far as possible 
even if you're not a follower of Jesus and you're sitting you're like man lad I'm not sure I believe in all this stuff for your own safety devil has nothing it's like literally going and patting a hyena you're not gonna do the world I'm just curious how I will just take a selfie no there are certain things you just don't touch in your life and same thing applies to demonic objects demonic books you run from that like crazy because the spiritual forces flow through that some of you you got that stuff in your house and that's the problem that you have. You need to get rid of that house, not the house, the stuff. <laughs> Keep the house. <laughs> Burn those things out. The Bible says in the New Testament in, in Church of Ephesus, Paul came in and they burned occultic books. The value in today's money was half a million dollars, $500,000 worth of books. There were occultic books that people burned. They didn't sell them on eBay. I find out sometimes people are like oh man I could sell this Ouija board <laughs> it's like really it's like why would you want to give a de your demon to someone else get rid of that thing completely in Jesus name and the the last the last part that that evil spirits can flow through is objects we mentioned objects places and people and the last one is and this comes as a shocker to a lot of people is animals animals can be used by spiritual world we see God using a donkey to speak to a prophet. We see God using a whale to swallow a man, teach him a lesson and vomit him out. I mean that whale was pretty hungry. He could have easily digested him but God touched that whale. We see also ravens who if you study ravens you find out that the ravens are so stingy and greedy they don't even share food with their children. And ravens were used to feed the prophet with steak. That's a miracle right there. We see the donkey that nobody ever used and we, we read that flippantly like oh nobody used the donkey praise God this was like brand new car. No it's like a horse nobody ever sat on. You don't want to sit on that because especially a horse that was never broken, a horse that was never ridden on. That's not a horse you want to take for a spin. Not in front of everybody. So Jesus riding a donkey nobody ever sat on is actually dangerous and that donkey didn't flip him because the, the power of God touched the donkey. So that means that animals can receive the power and power could flow through animals. Now you would say what about the demons? Can demons occupy animals? I think most of the kids are demon possessed. I'm just kidding. <laughs> all, right, all right, I've just slipped paying trying to see if you're paying attention and I just wanted to see how many cat lovers I have in here because I saw right away. No. <laughs> but do you remember when Jesus cast out a legion of demons? You know where the demons went to? And what happened with those pigs? They committed suicide. They self-destruct. They did things that pigs would never really do. Animals, they don't go uh, for danger. They, they don't destroy themselves. But the Bible says that the pigs ran from the cliff and they killed themselves. That means that, an, that the evil spirits can enter animals. So what does that mean for us? Pray for your pets. Seriously. Yeah. Bless your animals. There's nothing wrong with I mean I'm not saying lead them to salvation. That is a little bit too far. The Bible doesn't say that. But you can bless them. You can pray for them. You can dedicate them to God. Say hey this is dog is to guard my house not to bite anybody. You know this cat is to do this and, and you just bless because everything we have belongs to Jesus. Amen. Can somebody say amen. 